I'm John Dean. I'm one of the studio artists at the Foundry Art Center in St. Charles, and I'm a landscape painter. I work in acrylic and uh, generally go to specific places that I feel like I'm in touch with and take photographs, master shots, and a bunch of detail shots so that once I get back to my studio, I have hopefully all the information that I need to work from that subject. I'm an Iowa boy. I uh, was born in a small town or grew up in a small town in western Iowa and a uh, great place to grow up. I feel real lucky to have spent my, my years there. I grew up in the late 40s, 50s and 60s and that little town was really like a safe place from the 40s and it was a very nurturing kind of place to grow up. Mom was really interested in arts and in a small town that's a little unusual. My dad was not particularly interested in arts, and so I think it took a lot of guts on his part to let me decide to go away and major in art in college. I'd never even had any art classes in high school, but he was supportive of that. I also think I credit my dad with uh, my interest in or appreciation for landscape. He worked long and hard, and it wasn't too unusual, though, at the end of the day, he'd come home after supper, we'd go out and get an ice cream, and then we'd take a drive out in the country. And I really can remember Dad stopping at different places and either us all getting out of the car or through the window he would say, now, isn't that a pretty view? And it was just plain old rural Iowa. And I guess I thought it was a pretty view. And so that's probably why I have gravitated back. I suppose I'm trying to recapture my boyhood or something like that. I remember in fourth grade, though, sort of a defining moment when my fourth grade teacher, Miss Brookhauser, for some reason, and I'm really not sure why, asked me to draw um, a big nickel, a buffalo head nickel on a piece of brown craft paper. And I did. And it must have been okay because she put it up in front of the room and from then on, I guess I was the class artist. And if there were posters to be done or play scenery or that kind of stuff, I always got pointed at. So I really credit my dad and Miss Brookhauser with pointing me down this this pathway. And I never had a clear plan uh, about anything. I've just stumbled into the most lucky situations. So I went to a small high school, 35 people in my graduating class. No art classes. Um, great music program, and I was a part of the music program. Uh, went away to college, Drake University in Des Moines, and uh, decided to be an art major. I bet I couldn't even get in now, because you got to have portfolios, and I think all I had to have was a pulse. But I went to Drake and majored in art and uh, uh, didn't appreciate what was being offered me. I uh, really think back on how good some of my instructors were and how I just blew it off. I suppose a lot of people have that story, but uh, didn't take advantage of that undergraduate degree. Now later, when I was working on my master's at Webster, I was paying for it, and I was paying a lot more attention to it too, so uh, that made a difference. Uh, that was quite a bit later, and even after that, um, I got to the point where I was beginning to get smart enough to understand that those people had a lot of experience, a lot of things that I could benefit from. I took some great classes at Merrimack Community College. A guy named Bob Lewis had a course called Special Problems in Figure Drawing, Figure Painting. And you could take it as many times as you want. And I took it a whole bunch of times. And it was just the greatest class because it was really intense. You. Uh, Spent three hours working from a model, and the model got a break room once in a while. And Lewis would walk around and not say anything at all the whole night. Then he'd come up behind your work, and he'd say one thing, and it was right on the money, and it was what you'd missed, and it was what you really needed to hear, and it was really a good situation. And I taught school for a long time. I taught school for 33 years. I had a great time. Taught high school art. Um, and I tried to sort of model some of my behavior after what I saw Bob Lewis do, which is to keep your mouth shut, 
and wait for the important moment and then lay it in there kind of so someone might have the chance of hearing it. So anyway, after I taught school, um, I retired and decided, okay, I'd painted every summer, but not with much intensity. I said, okay, now I got the chance to paint. I'd been painting in watercolor. My watercolors were pretty geometric, landscape-based, but it, a lot of them were about um, the geometric patterns that you see on the ground in Iowa, the, the way the, everything is divided up into section lines and the way the fields are divided up, and there was a big relationship to my painting and that kind of stuff. So I started into uh, working in acrylics after I retired and uh, didn't want to do the same stuff. I, I, in fact, I said, I don't want to paint anything for anybody else. Anything I don't like gets painted right over and we'll see what happens. And so I'm painting at home and I'm happy. A friend of mine, Jane, said, they're opening some art studios in St. Charles. And I said, okay, well, uh, don't you drop off the edge of the earth just before you get to St. Charles? She assured me it was safe. And we came out here and I thought, wow, what a great studio, great light, great space. So Jane and I took a studio in uh, almost six years ago. She has since moved on to other things. I'm still here at the studio. And since then, I moved away from St. Louis County and moved to St. Charles County because I found there really is stuff on the other side, on the other edge of the world that I didn't realize. 